So what really makes for a good slow cooker anyways? Hi, I'm Anne from Nan Loves Food, and today we're gonna to be talking about all things slow cooker. So now that soup season is upon us, it is time to start thinking about pulling out that crock pot again. And I have spent a ton of time. Last year, I decided to upgrade my crock pot, and I wanna tell you all the things that I thought about before making the purchase of the crock pot that I did, why I loved my old one, and why I love my new one even more. When we're talking about slow cookers, the first thing we need to do is differentiate between what is a crock pot versus a slow cooker. So like the Kleenex versus tissue situation, crock pot is just a name brand. So generally a crock pot is referred to as that because it's got that giant heavy ceramic crock, but anything that has that crock is generally referred to as a slow cooker. When I go onto Amazon and just type in slow cooker, the crock pot brand is the first one to show up. This one here at $64.99 is kind of the Amazon's choice for a crock pot or a slow cooker. So this one is an eight quart, which is a huge, huge, I mean, that will make a ton of food. So if you want one for a big family, this might be a good choice for you. Obviously it's got a lot of really good reviews and it's got what you would expect to see in terms of a pretty simple interface. So it just has a high, a low and a keep warm, which is what you'd expect to see as well as a timing situation. So you can just set it and walk away. I'm sure this one is fine, but I think we can do a little bit better. So rather than buying one like this, my first slow cooker was one of these Hamilton Beach portable slow cookers. And there are a couple of reasons that I absolutely loved this. Now I will say I purchased this slow cooker or one just like it uh, about 10 years ago. It was when I bought my first house. It was a long time ago. And that thing is still running. Uh, <laughs> had it and used it and abused it and it is with my sister today. I passed it along to her because she was looking for a new one. So there are a couple of reasons that this model is particularly phenomenal and I will make sure to link all of these down in the description box below just in case you want to check them out and can see the one I'm showing you here. This is really cool because as you can see it's got that neat probe in it. So when people say they don't like food cooked in a crock pot, they mean they don't like overcooked food, generally speaking. One of the risks of a slow cooker is that you can overcook protein pretty easily because you're not keeping a close eye on it because you're putting it in there and you're walking away for four or six or eight or even 12 hours it can get overcooked pretty quickly and the cook isn't necessarily paying attention to everything happening. And this probe really, really helps that. So how it works is there's a probe button on the machine. You set it to the internal temperature that you want your meat to be, and then shove that probe in through that hole in the lid and then into the protein below. And once it hits the desired temperature, it just goes to a keep warm function. So there are certain things, especially like chicken breasts that are really precarious in the, in the slow cooker because, you know, a chicken breast depending on what you're buying at the grocery store, you can get chicken breasts that are like this thick and you can get chicken breasts that are like this thick, like these monster chicken breasts. And obviously those are gonna cook different times. So if you're following a recipe, you're either gonna need to know how to account for that or you just stick a probe in it and then you don't have to think about it, which is always my solution. If my kitchen appliance can think on my behalf, that's always gonna be my vote, right, always. So this probe kind of lets that be the case. So you don't end up overcooking your stuff because you just get it to the temperature that you want to get it to and then you're done. So I really, really love that feature about this particular slow cooker. The other thing that's really neat is that it's got these locks on the side. So those can be used if you're transporting your, let's say ham, like they've got in this picture. If you're taking your ham to grandma's house, you put on the clips, you lock it down, and that's pretty securely in there. Now, you can't dump the thing upside down and expect it to be okay, but it's really tight and secure. And so if you're looking to have something that you can take places, this is a really good option. One of my husband's most favorite dishes is the ground beef with the Velveeta cheese and then you dump some uh, chili in it, like cans of chili. It's delicious. I know it sounds gross, but it, it's really good football food. 
but you just cook all those things together. And if you're taking something like a dip like that to a friend's house for a football game or to a family member's for a holiday or whatever you're doing, this is an awesome way to transport that. So I really, really loved this slow cooker, but there was one thing that it didn't do that once I found out that slow cookers could do, I just couldn't live without. And that's why I had to get this one. Uh, so I actually have the iteration prior uh, to, to this one. Instant Pot is constantly coming out with new versions of the same machine, basically. So that's what they did here. But once I found out that you could buy a slow cooker that also would sear or saute, I had to have one because Often, if you're looking at really good, well-tested recipes, you'll find that either your meat or your veg or both need to be seared or sauteed before you put them into the slow cooker. So basically, I have to dirty another dish and I'm not into doing that. Like that is just an extra step that is not worth it to me. So when I found out that I could buy a slow cooker that I could sear and saute in, I had to have this one. This one is significantly more expensive than the Hamilton Beach slow cooker that I had before. This one was only $54.99. This one was $129.95. So obviously that's a big difference. If you're looking for more of a budget version, I would definitely recommend getting the Hamilton Beach one. But because this one can sear and saute, that dip that I was telling you about with the Velveeta and the chili, I can actually brown the hamburger for that recipe in the same vessel that I'm going to cook it in, which is fantastic, right? Like I don't have to get things out and start over. So for me, because I primarily use my slow cooker for things like soups and stews and dips, being able to sear the meat or saute the veg in here beforehand is a game changer. It's absolutely worth the extra money to me to save me that dish every single time I bust this out, which during soup season is probably going to be two to three times a week, seriously, that this thing will get used. So if you're looking at a cost per use, which is how I have to look at my kitchen appliances, because if I'm using something all the time, it's worth investing a little bit more to get something that I'm going to be happy with and I'm going to use to actually cook in my kitchen. Having all of the appliances and then having to go get takeout because they're too complicated to use is not is not what we're about. We want it to be simple around here. So most of these other buttons I don't use, uh, with the exception, obviously I use the slow cook button. And then um, actually we've used the bake function on this quite a bit, which seems a little crazy perhaps to you. I didn't think that, that would be something that I would use, but I found this recipe and I'll link to my video of doing it below that just blows my mind, but you're actually able to take a box of pasta and some sauce and some water and maybe some meat if you want to throw it all in this appliance and bake it like dump, 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 walk away. And you come back to perfectly cooked pasta in about an hour. And I still like, I have a hard time believing this works, but it does and it is so good. Uh, it just really blew my mind the first time I, I found out that you could even do something like that. And the recipe that I adapted for was from the oven, but I was like, hey, I've got this thing. I wonder if it would work and it sure did and it is so good. So I will link that video down below so you can check that out. I did make it in, in this slow cooker specifically. I personally don't do like yogurt or anything in this. Um, but I will say that if you're going to do things like a roast or a braised short rib or anything that's like a low and slow meat situation, being able to sear your meat in the same pot that you're going to cook it in chef's kiss, like real good, real good. Highly recommend. So the other thing about this slow cooker that you just might want to keep in mind is that the difference between the crock style. So, with a traditional crock pot, you're dealing with that heavy ceramic situation. With this, this is a very, very lightweight metal pot that has a nonstick coating on it. So depending on how you feel about nonstick, totally get it if that gives you the heebie-jeebies. If it does, go ahead and get that Hamilton Beach one. It'll be great, it'll serve you well. Uh, this one, because it has to get up to high enough heat to sear, it is made of metal and it does have that nonstick coating on top. And I have to tell you, it is an absolute dream to clean. 
because not only are you not having to deal with this giant heavy croc and like navigating it and not work with those giant heavy crocs they can be a real pain to wash right they stuff can stick to the edge i have actually broken a croc before because they are ceramic they will break um so you have to be careful navigating it around the sink especially if you have like a double sink situation so it doesn't all the way fit and so you've got to kind of prop it up but it can't fall uh the ceramic can be a lot to deal with this is so easy the pot itself is dishwasher safe so you can pop it in the dishwasher honestly the non-stick works so well that i can pretty much just wipe it out with a soapy sponge and it's done there's not there's just not a lot of work involved in getting this thing clean which i really really appreciate if you're looking to get even fancier uh, instant pot does make this eight quart that actually has a sous vide function on it so sous vide isn't something that I've mastered in my own kitchen yet, but if you're looking for an appliance that does one more thing, that might be interesting to you. It certainly is to me. This one wasn't out when I purchased mine. Otherwise, I probably would have given it some very serious consideration. So that is all I have for you on this video today. If I missed any points that you think people should know before buying a slow cooker, please leave those in the comments below. Or if you just thought this video was helpful, let me know and give me a thumbs up on this video. If you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and do so and click that notification bell so you get notified every time we upload a video here. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll see you next time.